So there are other viscous effects, time-dependent effects, right? You know, we see this viscous, visco, time dependence, right? Um, one of those is creep, right? So creep is the process of continued straining after uh, a fixed load is applied, right? So if I take, if I take, and I say I squeeze my pin here with my hand, squeeze it. To, my pin's not a good example, but if I if I take some material and I squeeze it with my hands, apply a force to it, right? and at some point I stop and I hold that force steady, right? So I don't apply any additional pressure. I just stop and you know I continue to hold the force, but I don't I don't add to it. Right? I don't I don't squeeze any harder. If the material was to continue to form after that, that's the process of creep. So that's that's illustrated here, right? So I have a fixed stress, but the strain continues to increase. Okay. So then the alternative scenario, and this is probably has to do with uh, your comment, Sophie, Ann, is that uh, the stress re relaxation. So in your load frame, the, they're displacement controlled, right? So you're 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 fixing the displacement at some rate. You know, you're displacing and you're measuring the force through a load cell. And so at some point if you were to stop displacing it, stop straining it, and you see some continued change in the force for some time, that could be a stress relaxation effect. Okay. So again, th in this example, I deform the material and then I stop deforming it and then I measure the force, and if the force changes over time, then that's, you know, typically it would be decreasing. I can't think of a, I can't think of a mechanism that would cause it to increase after you stop displacing it. And that would be a stress relaxation. And so, Here's an example of, you know, um, real material on um, basically cleaned and dried or, you know, fired sand where, why did my pen keep going away? So this line here is the load cycle. So this is, there's an axial strain being applied. So the plotting over here. So there's an axial strain being applied. It's about so like a little less than one, you know, a little more than one percent strain. And then it's held fixed for some time, and the st and the stress is measured. Is that right? No, I said that wrong. All right. All right. So this is this is the confining pressure, right? So this is the red line is the pressure. So the Pressure is ramped up to 10 MPa and held fixed, and then this is the, this line is the strain. So then the strain is over here. The strain continues to increase like that, and then this is done over multiple load cycles, and you see the, the same behavior. So that's creep, and this is a you know sand. So, you know, one constitutive model for creep is a power law, right? So this this is just you have some initial strain plus so two two constants of co coefficients, right? C uh, this is a mul multiplicative um, constant out front, and then t to some power. So t is time, some power. Well, if you know what that equation, right? Who who knows what that equation sort of you? In, you know, almost any value of C and N uh, that I choose, what, what, what the shape of that equation would look like if I plotted it. It turns out it would, it would look something like
Something like that. So, something like that. Yeah, it's a, that's the shape of a power law curve. So that's a constitutive model we can use for creep. Um, so here's some data on stress relaxation. Um, so in this case, yeah, in this case, you have uh, differential stress. So that's like the difference. It's a, it's a measure of the shear stress, effectively. It's the difference in the maximum and minimum principal stresses. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a measure of shear stress versus axial strain, okay? And in this case, you actually have a family of stress-strain curves at different strain rates. So these three are associated with a confining pressure of 15 MPa, and these three are associated with a confining pressure of 50 MPa. Right? So this shows a lot on this plot, in fact. It shows a first a pressure dependence, right? So these were these tests were done where I basically apply, I stick the sample in a hydrostatic bath, so as in a fluid bath, and apply a pressure to all sides of 15 megapascal. And then I load it in such a way that I change the dif differential stress, the max the, the difference between the maximum and minimum principal stresses. Okay. And so uh, you can see a significant pressure dependence. Right? This is actual data. So you know, when you took uh, engineering mechanics 319, you learned that every material was linear elastic, right? The, the slope of the stress-strain curve is just one value. Clearly, real materials don't behave that way. In fact, go pick up any SPE paper on hydraulic fracturing. I guarantee you 99% of them 99% are going to use a linear elastic constitutive model. Or, but real materials aren't linear elastic. It takes something much more complex than that. Right? And especially, you know, rocks under pressure right, have a significant amount of inelasticity. Okay? They also have a rate dependence, right? So these are over three strain rates 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 5. Those are very slow strain rates, and you see this dependence. As a rule of thumb, you can use about 5% increase of strength per decade of strain rate. Right. So decade of strain rate is you know, the difference in the exponent, 7, 6, 5. So that's what you see here. It's about a you know, roughly rule of thumb. Not, it's not always going to be like that, but if you don't know any, if you don't have any real data, you can assume something like a 5% increase per decade of strain rate. So, you know, I used to work in impact mechanics, like car crashes. The, the strain rate in those events is 10 to the third, eight orders of magnitude higher than that. And so these curves are way over here. The material's much stronger at those type of strain rates. So, uh, so anyway, in, in this one, you know, you have the three curves for the three different strain rates at two different combining pressures. And then, in this case, they're loaded, displacement controlled for some to up to some strain, like 7% strain, and then held fixed, and the force continued to measure, and then you see some relaxation. 